So what I'm going to do for this, the beginning of this journey is I'm just going to look at the scenario built out around the SSL visibility. So I'm going to choose that as uh, my beginning of my analytics. And as you're seeing, as I'm starting to just choose something, more of the story is starting to be painted for me. So I'm not having to figure out what data sources do I need to go grab from. I can just literally select artifacts and the rest of the story will be painted. This is easily accomplishable with the Corelight and Devo because of the power of that UID. So for us to very easily paint the entire story, I can correlate, map, and link all the UIDs together to tell me exactly what has occurred. So by me selecting the notice to start this, now I can see detailed breakouts of the notice. So by selecting this, first and foremost, the, the uh, Devo engine is already going out and, and obtaining a bunch of enrichment services, looking at where is this office location, right? Also what we're taking in by me selecting the notice, you can see the SSL comms, which is a category that Corelight generates. But as you can see, when I selected the source IP address from this data, not only are we populating the uh, additional context but you're seeing additional analytics coming from Zeek analysis, from the fingerprinting, right? So we're taking the JA3s and the JA3Ss, kind of the hashing algorithms that, that the system is generating and being able to enrich that and validate, is that a known bad actor? So as I scroll down, not only did I get the fingerprinted and validated uh, SSL connections. Now we're automatically take, using that UID and linking that to the specific DNS requests that have been uh, made by the victim itself. So I can continue to scroll. And by, by doing so, not only do I have the DNS request, but I also have identified based on that UID match that there was in fact HTTP connections that were established by this potential victim. So that is a critical piece of this puzzle, right? Is let's continue to utilize the UID to find out what else has happened, not just by the initial conversations. So by me selecting the UID, now you can, can see in here, there was a uh, file that was downloaded. Corelight identified and captured a file that was uh, downloaded via the HTTP session. But it gets more than that. The analysis that the Corelight engine is doing is identified, hey, this there is a uh, file called worming.png that was observed being downloaded within the HTTP session. It was identified as an executable. So what the Devo platform has done based upon the pointers from Corelight is we're taking the hashes of the executable and automatically checking them and enriching them with threat intelligence services in the backend. But the story doesn't end there. Now that thanks to us having those artifacts together, we can continue to take that community ID or we could even use other artifacts that were produced from the Corelight engine, such as the hashes, and correlate them with other data sets, such as the endpoint. So as you can see, just by turning on the cameras, as I like to call them, on the wire, turning, activating those Corelight sensors, giving me full visibility and detection capabilities, pumping that all real time into Devo to complete the story, validate the threat and respond.